you. Please join with me in singing our opening song. It can be found in the hymnal at number 893. Very first among believers. We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 5.
sharing the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the great shepherd has gone before who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that, free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you have gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, greetings of peace, hope, and joy of our risen Lord Jesus Christ to you all. Today the main theme that we are going to reflect upon is about the voice of the shepherd or the voice of God. Voice of the shepherd or the voice of God. When I ponder over it, the first thought that comes to my mind is does God have a voice? Followed by another question. Do I listen to the voice of God? Here I am reminded of what the psalmist wrote 4,000 years ago. He says, The voice of God is so powerful. And further he says, the voice of God is full of majesty. My dear brother, the Bible tells us about God's active voice in everything. In other words, the Bible is nothing but God's voice, isn't it? The Bible is nothing but God's voice. There are hundreds of examples where we can find people who have heard the voice of God in the Bible. But the truth, the reality, the fact is that those who have heard the voice of God have changed their life, have changed their way of living, and their life have been blessed with the grace and blessing of God. I'll give you a few examples. You take the King Solomon. King Solomon obeyed God's voice and received wisdom to rule his kingdom. With that wisdom, he was able to rule diligently and he was able to establish peace in his kingdom. Whereby the rest of the rulers, the rest of the kings were looking at him, admiring at his, the way he was ruling his Pope Benedict XVI congratulated former U.S. President Barack Obama, saying, On the historic occasion of your election as President of the United States of America, I pray that Almighty God will assist you in your high responsibilities in the service of the nation and within the international community. May God abundant blessings sustain you and the beloved American people as you strive together with men and women of goodwill to build a world of peace, solidarity and justice. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, God speaks to us. He speaks to us, but in His own ways. In His own ways. Each one of us present here have heard the voice of God in one way or another. And more particularly, right now, you have heard the voice of God and therefore you have set aside all your busy, busy schedule and you are present here listening to the voice of God that 
is being spoken through me, you are listening to him. My dear brethren, unfortunately, the voice of God that we listen now and then is being lost in the noise of the modern world. It is lost the voice of the modern world, the voice of materialism, the voice of consumerism, the voice of hedonism, the voice of selfishness, me, meism, and so on. The Bible tells us about the dead consequences. Their consequences for refusing to listen to the voice of God. And I believe that this COVID-19 pandemic is one such a repercussion on humanity for refusing to listen to the voice of God. Just as Jonah disobey God's voice and suffer, so as we disobey God's voice and are suffering now. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 20 says, The Lord will send on you a curse, panic, and frustration in everything you set your hand to until you are speedily destroyed and perish for the evil you have done in forsaking me. We read in the book of Micah, chapter 6, verses 13 to 15, says, I have begun to destroy you with the devastation because of your sins. You shall eat without being satisfied, food that will leave you empty. What you acquire, you cannot save, and what you save, I will deliver up to the soul. You shall sow, yet not reap. My dear brothers and sisters, I am not telling you all this to frighten you. It is the fact, it is the voice of God, it is in the Bible. Today we see the whole world is at the knee, bending down, seeking for God that He may deliver us from this horrendous phenomenon, that He may deliver us from this contagion. It's not enough to listen to the voice of God only at this particular predicament. We need to listen to His voice relentlessly in every moment of our life. The second fact is that the voice of God can be listened only by those willing to listen. And therefore, dear brother, our church may be closed, but Christ is not quarantined. His gospel is not in chains. The heart of Jesus is open to everybody, everyone who seeks Even though we may not worship together, each of us can seek Him in the tabernacle of our own hearts, where we can listen to His voice and make this world a beautiful place. We can make this world a peaceful world, a peaceful, a wonderful one, by becoming His voice to each and every one 
living around us. And therefore, dear children, dear parents, and all of my dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, are you ready to become the voice of God?
you, Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these pastoral mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our danger. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he never ceases to offer himself for us but defends us and ever pleads our cause before, before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even heavenly powers with angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Yeah. 
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with our Pope Francis, our Bishop Charles, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saints Francis and Claire, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Thank you, Father. 